Hello, consider question number one. It reads that there is a bead which is released from one end of a frictional laser rigid frame uh, which is uh, fixed on a vertical plane and it slides periodically on the frame. Size of the bead is very small and the radius of curvature which is also small as compared to the length of the straight portions of the frame. So this is a frame and here this is a bead and it is being released from here and this frame is fixed so frame is not going to move. Question ask if linear dimensions of the frame are made four times by what factor will the frequency of periodic motion of the bead will change. So uh, this frame is fixed this bead is going to release from here it's going to be slide down then it will be moving in this way then it will be moving in the upward direction and it will rise up to the same level uh, because of the it's a mechanical energy conservation point of view and then you'll find it will slide back downside move here and come back to this place so it will be re uh, completing one cycle and then after it will be repeating the same cycle so it will keep on repeating the same cycle so when a motion repeats itself we call it as a periodic motion so uh, this periodic motion is going to have a time period and its frequency we need to find the frequency and then we need to find the frequency when the dimensions are made four times so that's the overall question here is the solution let me explain so we will consider this picture so uh, just redraw the same picture let's say it was released from a it goes to this point and this dimension is l1 when it comes to this horizontal segment its velocity initially becomes v or that's v basically it will maintain the same velocity because it's frictionless and let's say this dimension is l2 then it will rise up up to b this a and b are going to be at the same horizontal level and this is symmetrical framework so uh, we will we can say that this height that is going to travel up is going to be uh, or length is going to be l1 so this is l1 this is l1 this is l2 this is how we are going to use the parameters let's say this angle of inclination is theta so if you measure this angle this is also going to be theta so we, will, we know that along the inclined plane there is an acceleration component which is called g sin theta and g cos theta is perpendicular which gives the normal reaction right. So here it is decided uh, it has been decided equation also has stated that its motion is periodic motion between a and b. Now time taken to cover the length uh, l1 so our focus is to find the time period. So first we find how much the time it takes to go downwards on this inclined segment. So we can apply S is equal to ut plus half ed square the second equation of constant acceleration motion here acceleration remains constant right. Initial velocity is 0 distance to be covered is L1 acceleration is g sin theta let's say t1 was time so t1 can be calculated like this. Then we need to find uh, this v velocity so we can say uh, third equation of this constant acceleration motion v, is v square is equal to u square plus 2a s u is 0 a is g sin theta or distance or displacement that is being covered is L1. So from here we can find the velocity. Now we can easily find out how much the time it is going to take in the horizontal segment. So let's say that time is T2 so to cover L2 distance. This is going to be L2 divided by V because it's moving with a constant velocity. L2 is the same uh, L2 and this V can be substituted from there. Then time period uh, will be this time plus this time plus this time and again the same times that means twice of all the times. We know when we are coming on the inclined plane and or rising up to the inclined plane if we are covering the same distance and if we have the same velocity then the time is going to be same. Because here it's a retardation is going to be g sin theta because inclination is so this time will also be equal to t1. So in one way it's going to take 2 t1 plus t2. So 2 t1 plus t2 is in one way and we are going to multiply by 2 to find it out for the entire cycle. Okay, So let's place the value of t1 from here and t2 from there. So we place the values it will be like this. So in this uh, we can see directly or we can further simplify it. From here uh, what I have done is I have taken this under root 2 g sin theta l1 as a common. So this was g sin theta so you multiply by 2 outside 2 downside so this will become common and you will find this 4 
upside will come out as a 2. So that will come 2 into 2, 4 and there will be a L1 upside. So L1 is square basically within the root, so L1. So basically a one term will become 4 L1. From here you will find L2 will be outside and there is going to be L1 in this. What we are because basically focusing upon the dimensions. So in, in this time period expression you will find the dimensions L1 and L2 are involved. So uh, now what we are going to do is we are going to make this linear dimensions four times. So let's say L1 dash is the new dimension for this. This is L2 dash, this is L1 dash and all have been made four times to the, the previous values. So L1 dash is four times L1, L2 dash is four times L2. Let's substitute these numbers over there. So new time period, let's say that new time period becomes T dash. So it's going to be two divided by under root two G sin theta, the same stuff L1 will be re replaced by L1 dash which is basically uh, 4 L1. So this will become L1 dash, this will become L2 dash, this will become uh, whatever these dashes are. Okay. And then after what to do is, uh, we need to say that um, uh, replace them by 4 L1 and L2 respectively. So that will become 4 L1, this will become 4 L2, then you will find 4 will be common from this uh, numerator. And you are going to write it as a 4 L1, so uh, square root of 4 will be common from the denominator. So basically numerator will give us a 4 outside and denominator will give extra 2. And whatever the rest is going to be there, there is going to be rest to this number. So that rest will become T value. You can fill some steps over here. Then you will realize that it becomes twice T. That means new time period is twice of the original time period if we make the lens four times. So what about the frequency? We know the frequency is one upon time period. So this T dash can be replaced by one upon F dash and T can be replaced as one upon F. So from here we, we found that F dash is equal to F by two. That means frequency is uh, one by two of the initial one. So it says by what factor the frequency changes so frequency changes by a factor called half. So we will see the options. In option, there is an option half as a D. So we are going to say that D is our correct response. Okay. So this is how we can get the answer of this question. I hope you got it. Thank you.